United Market geared up for the full moon festival. Vietnam Laos Cambodia join hands in tourism development. And Vietnam keeps key rate at 7% to strengthen economy. Hello and welcome to Daily Bees. With seller outnumbering buyers, the Ho Chi Minh City Stock Exchange witnessed its VN index fall for the third day in a row on Wednesday. The index lost 1.69 points to close at 580.9. Most blue chips went down. Analysts say although the market is being backed up by the central bank's decision to keep the benchmark interest rate at 7% a year and a lift in GDP in the second quarter, it's still hard for the index to reverse. Most investors are forecast to book profits while the index advances towards the benchmark of 600 points in the near future. The HNX index at Hanoi Bourse lost another 0.79 point to finish at 184.29. The upcoming index at the market for unlisted public companies closed at 65.54, losing 0.36 point from the previous session. And now let's have a look at the top gainers and losers of the day. Vietnam's export volume saw an increase of 3.5% in September, reaching 4.7 billion US dollars in revenue, reported the General Statistics Office GSO on Tuesday. Apart from crude oil, which fell by 45.6%, almost every other exported product has kept pace with previous years, says the GSO. Among the key items, the garments and textile sector saw a slight decrease of 1%, earning just over 6.7 billion US dollars. Electronic goods, computers, and spare parts earned 1.92 billion US dollars, while machinery and other equipment pocketed nearly 1.4 billion US dollars. The two figures are equal to the same period last year. A number of agricultural products saw a strong increase, such as pepper 52%, rice 34%, tea nearly 20%, coffee 14.4%, and rubber 7%. Government exports to Japan are expected to be worth one billion US dollars this year, a rise of 20% over last year, according to the Vietnam Textile and Apparel Association (VTAS). The association said that about 80% of Vietnamese garment makers have received orders that would see them through to the end of the year. About 30 to 40% of those orders were from Japan, VTAS added. Japan has become an increasingly important market for Vietnamese garments as orders from the U.S. and the EU have declined due to global economic downturn. Last year, Vietnamese textile and garment export to Japan were worth $820 million, 16% higher than in 2007. The State Inspection Committee Tuesday allowed Petro Vietnam investors of the Zungquot oil refinery to reopen the plant Wednesday after a broken valve leading to a six-week shutdown was fixed. The committee said it had checked the repairs conducted by contractor TechShip SA on the broken valve at the refinery fluid catalytic cracker and found that it met technical specifications. The 148,000 barrel a day refinery in the central province of Quang Ngai, which started commercial operation in February, aims to meet a third of Vietnam's fuel demand by next year. The nation currently imports almost all of its oil products. Construction of Vietnam's second refinery, the 200,000 barrel a day Nghi Sơn plant in the northern province of Thanh Hoa, will start in June next year, a Petro Vietnam official said earlier this month. Vietnam has surpassed Indonesia to become the largest ceramic and granite tile producer in Southeast Asia, according to Ding Quang Hui, chairman of the Vietnam Building Ceramic Association. Vietnam currently has an annual production output of roughly 300 million square meters of ceramic and granite tile. 
while Indonesia has a little over 200 million square meters. With this great achievement, Vietnam was recognized as the world's sixth largest ceramic and granite tile producer, Hui said. Vietnam's ceramic tiles have also been exported to many countries worldwide, including Australia and the Republic of Korea, with a yearly turnover of roughly 110 million US dollars. Vietnam, the world's second biggest rice exporter, will open the country's first exchange for the grain on November the 26th to boost trading. The information was confirmed by Nguyen Van Dong, Director of Hậu Giang Province Agriculture and Rural Development Department. This change will be located in Hậu Giang in the Mekong Delta, Vietnam's main rice growing area. About 30 companies have so far registered to trade on the exchange, most of them subsidiaries of Vietnam Southern Food Corporation, one of the country's two biggest state-owned agricultural produce companies that manage domestic food supplies. This year's Mid-Autumn Festival is due this Saturday. During this annual event, lanterns together with mooncakes are an indispensable part. After many years, Vietnamese lantern makers are regaining their foothold at domestic market, producing more eye-catching products than those imported from China, which had previously flooded the market, a report from Ho Chi Minh City. For years now, Hai Thượng Lan Ong Fooding and Lương Nhu Học Streets in District No. 5 of Ho Chi Minh City are known as streets sub lanterns when full moon festivals near. This year, domestic lanterns makers are dominating this market with their products outnumbering Chinese better powered ones. Vietnamese lanterns are selling faster than those imported from China. I come from the north where children often play with star shaped lanterns. Looking at these lanterns here makes me feel homesick. I'll buy one. Chinese lanterns look more modern, but not as original and attractive as Vietnamese traditional ones. Shop owners say this year Vietnamese lanterns are much cheaper than Chinese lanterns. One more thing that makes Vietnamese traditional lanterns sell better than Chinese ones is that the design of Vietnamese lanterns is more eye-catching. More importantly, traditional lanterns somehow are still deeply rooted in the mind of Vietnamese. Chinese lanterns are often large in size and expensive. When it breaks down, not everyone knows how to fix it. Customers now prefer Vietnamese lanterns to Chinese ones. The more Vietnamese lanterns are sold, the better traditional features of the full moon festival are preserved. And this year, many Vietnamese will enjoy the festival in moonlight and candlelight instead of the light coming from the better powered lanterns. Within the International Tourism Expo, which is going on Ho Chi Minh City, a conference on investment in tourism in Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, was held September the 30th. The event, attended by many senior officials and heads of tourism companies of the three countries, is considered an opportunity for joint investment and business cooperation. At the conference, representatives from the three countries introduced the potentials of each country in tourism development. Vietnam is considered one of the five fastest growing tourism markets in the next five years, with the annual turnover of 2.3 billion US dollars. According to CB Richards Alley's Vietnam, the real estate products for tourism are witnessing a robust growth. So far, 70% of apartments valued 1 million US dollars each in real estate projects along beaches have been sold. Acknowledging the situation, tourism sector of the three countries are taking prompt action to gain greater market share. We are setting up specific action plans to make way for tourism development of the three countries. Then we open conferences on certain themes to work out more nice forums to the tourism sectors of Vietnam, Laos and Cambodia. From the cooperation at governmental level, the tourism sector of each country has implemented various activities including experience exchange, human resource training, organizing roadshow and caravan tours.
We still face financial shortage for tourism promotion campaigns. What we need to do is to encourage enterprises to join the marketing events such as the three countries, one destination. It is estimated that 300 enterprises from 16 countries attended the International Tourism Expo in Ho Chi Minh City this year. With all the efforts from the organizers and leaders of the tourism sector of Vietnam, Laos and Cambodia, the prospects of development for tourism in the Indochina in the future will be bright. Vietnam's central bank has decided to keep the benchmark interest rate unchanged at 7% the lowest rate since at least December 2005 to strengthen the economy. The Vietnamese economy continues to show positive developments and clear sign of recovery. State Bank of Vietnam Governor Nguyen Văn Zhou said in a statement on the bank's website Wednesday, which gave the rate decision. According to the SBV, some commercial banks have increased their deposit interest rate in Vietnamese dong and U.S. dollars accounts by 0.3 percent per year. The adjustment is thought to be appropriate for joint stock banks and will not affect the general interest rate. And following is the exchange rate updated for today. news around the world. World number one automaker Toyota announced a huge recall of some 3.8 million vehicles due to risks a loose floor mat could force down the accelerator. The problem is suspected of causing crashes that kill five people involving Toyota vehicles, which the U.S. Transportation Secretary called an urgent matter. The recall, which could also cover Camry and Avalon sedans as well as two pickup trucks, would be the largest ever for Toyota which says it's too early to estimate the potential financial impact. Its largest previous recall was in 2005 for a steering rod problem involving 900,000 cars. And now let's take a look at some economic highlights around Europe. Banks are in the spotlight today. The Financial Times says Swiss bank UBS wants to cut its ties with its government by repaying its loans. Under the bad bank scheme, UBS pays for protection against toxic assets, but it's expensive. With credit markets making a recovery, the bank believes it could take those assets back and return to the red within a year. France's BNP Paribas also wants to repay state aid early. It's looking to raise 4.3 billion euros from the sale of new shares in a rights issue after the French government lent it more than 5 billion euros. In the UK, the construction industry has given a boost to Britain's economy. Losses weren't as big as expected. The latest GDP data points to a 0.6% fall in the second quarter instead of the predicted 0.7%. The CBI says the country is expected to emerge from recession later this year. There was more positive news for the Eurozone economy. Consumer confidence in the 16 Euro nations has risen to a one-year high. The Economic Sentiment Index points to a 2% increase going into September. And that's it for today's Daily Biz. Thanks for watching and see you next time.